All right. Well, welcome everybody. And thank you so much for joining the webinar session today. Um, appreciate all of your time and attention. I know it's a busy time at the moment. Um, and thank you very much for being on time uh, here as well. So the session today is called Unlocking Efficiency, Identifying Ideal Clients for Approval Max. Now we've created this webinar uh, off the back of a lot of feedback from accounting and bookkeeping firms that we speak to about this particular topic where firms are recognizing that there is potential to be helping more of their clients on a proactive basis around things like accounts payable, approval workflows, financial controls, but they're not really sure where to start with their clients, right? How do they approach that topic? How do they deliver that to clients in a way that is going to be beneficial for the client, but also going to be beneficial for the firm? So hopefully by the end of today's session, you'll have a bit more of a clearer understanding of how you can structure your services and offerings to clients in a more proactive way, helping your clients to unblock their business and also driving more revenue and more client satisfaction for your firm as well. Now, just a few housekeeping points before we do jump into things. Uh, this session is gonna be around 30 minutes in total. We'll also be recording the session. So if you do need to jump off for any reason at all, please feel free to do so. We'll be sending the copy of a recording um, probably within the next 24 hours. All right, so if we jump into the next slide, we can do some introductions. So just to introduce myself to start with, my name is James Lynn. Uh, I'm the sales lead for APAC for Approval Max. Now I've been working with businesses and accounting firms for close to a decade now helping them to streamline their business using technology. Uh, I've worked with small mum and dad businesses all the way up to top 10 accounting firms here in Australia and New Zealand. Now I'm joined here with our resident Approval Max guru, Justin Campbell. Justin, do you want to uh, do an introduction? Uh, yeah, hi, hi everyone. So uh, my name's Justin Campbell. I've originally got an accounting background and um, in public practice and then I worked for zero for 10 years and for the last year have been helping people implement financial controls and approvals with approval max. Awesome, awesome. It's great to have Justin on here. Um, as you mentioned, he's been in the industry for quite some time with zero, some, so some really good insights that we can share today, hopefully. All right, so let's move on to the agenda for today. Now, firstly, we'll be having a bit of a discussion around how you can identify ideal clients for Approval Max. So rather than taking a bit of a reactive approach to helping clients, how can we actually start assisting clients in a more proactive way? And I think the first step of that is understanding across our entire client base, who is a potential fit for something like Approval Max. I will also talk a bit about structuring this from the accounting or bookkeeping firm's perspective, right? So how do firms actually benefit from offering systems like Approval Max to clients? And also what have we seen other firms do to find some success in this area? Then we'll dive into discussing these topics with your client, right? How can we do this um, in a way that clients are going to see the value? So we'll provide some tips and tricks around pricing and pitching your services. After that, we'll talk a little bit about Approval Max's partner program. So what are some of the key benefits that we provide to assist you and assist your firm in growing together with Approval Max? Now, of course, if you do have any questions throughout the session today, uh, please feel free to shoot those through in the Q&A section of Zoom. Um, we'll be able to see those through and we'll spend a bit of time at the end of the session to run through those as well. So any questions whatsoever, uh, please, please use the Q&A section here in Zoom. All right. Now to kick things off, let's start a poll. So we've got a poll here for everyone in attendance, just so we can understand a little bit more about your firm and the services that you currently provide to your clients. So the poll is, do you currently offer accounts payable or virtual CFO services for your clients. Now, if you could all just put in an answer here, yes, if you do provide these services, no, if that's not something you currently do. We're pretty neck and neck here. <laughs> 
Okay. All right. Does that surprise okay. you, Justin? 50-50 so far? Uh I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we're exactly 50% at the moment. Um, okay, so uh, the few people haven't answered yet. Um, so um, actually, I think that's everyone now. All right, so we'll end the poll and I'll share the results. But yeah, those results were were neck and neck. So regardless of where you're currently offering accounts payable or virtual CFO at the moment, we're going to be able to help you today. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks for, for answering that poll, everyone. Okay. All well, right. let's jump into the, the content. So today we're, we're really talking about how firms can use Approval Max to unlock efficiency in their practice, right? So a lot of firms are providing support around approvals, around accounts payable in a bit of a reactionary way. Maybe the firm has come to the client and they've self-diagnosed an issue right, where they're still using, you know, paper processes, still printing out bills or invoices, getting them stamped, having to chase people up manually. And sometimes, you know, these manual processes can, ta can take up to a week to have any bills or purchase orders approved and paid. So for firms that are looking to help their clients in a bit more of a proactive way, sometimes it's difficult to know which clients may be struggling with approvals or financial controls. So Justin, maybe if we start off, how how can we know what clients should go on Approval Max? Yeah, okay. So we've really outlined um, a couple different criteria where uh, Approval Max uh, fits, and they some of them are quite different from each other. So this, uh, so the main uh, one one of the main ones is where you're providing accounts payable services on the client's behalf. So that could you could either be a bookkeeper or an accountant. Um, and, and in this case, what you really want is an audit trail of what bills are getting approved and which ones should be, should be paid. And you want that to though, that approval process to flow as automatically as possible. Now, um, the beauty of approval max is that all the approvals are done, um, automatically based on the work the workflows that you created. And we have multiple ways of approving things. So you can approve things um, by going into Approval Max or you can, we have the mobile app. We also sent email notifications where you hit approve, but importantly, all of that gets recorded um, in Approval Max and then gets added onto an, um, an audit report that then gets attached to the source transaction, uh, gets attached to the transaction in, in Xero or QuickBooks Online or NetSuite, so um, so you've got that full full history there, and and this is really important if you're going to be offering services to your clients. So uh, we have some partners who who they have their um, their junior staff members entering the bills, and they might be using uh, Dext or HubDoc or something like that that then gets fed into fed into Approval Max, and then Approval Max sends it to a more senior person in the practice for a review. Um, and then and then once it's reviewed, it gets to the gets into the client for the for the final sign-off. So then it becomes approved. So that way you know all the bills that are sitting in awaiting payment in zero or in QuickBooks, um, you know that they've been approved and there's a full audit trail audit trail and order report there that says it's a report um, that, that it's all been approved and the right people have signed it off in an efficient way. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so um, another criteria is, um, uh, uh, is where you have clients and this is a really big, big market for approval maxes is um clients that have or governance requirements. So these are a lot of your non-for-profit clients, your sporting organizations. So um a lot of these, a lot of the big sporting organizations you can think of or charities or non-for-profits you can think of, a lot of them already on approval max. It's become sort of the default choice in the zero ecosystem for any organization that has to demonstrate governance and that everything's getting signed off and approved. So that that's a that's a really big one. But another one that you might not think of that's quite similar to the non-for-profits in that way are 
uh, businesses that have a lot of external investors. So we have a lot of sort of tech startups and renewable energy projects and and things like that that end up getting um, put on put on approval max. Uh, and and uh, and a, a really clear one is clients who have multiple approvers. So so the moment you have more than one approver inside a business, you really outgrow the capacity of small business software to be able to handle that with their inbuilt um, approval approval process. So to explain that in zero terms, uh, anyone who's got the ability to approve a bill in zero can see every bill in that in that zero file and they can also pay them as well so it gives it, it really gives far too much access to to a business's zero file than what a lot of businesses are comfortable with and this is why you end up with these paper based paper based systems um, and email based systems because people aren't comfortable giving away that level of access to the to the accounting file um, but so they end up doing things outside of the accounting file to compensate compensate for it another one i see a real lot uh businesses or organizations that are using um uh are, are getting batch payments approved so when you when paying when it actually comes time to pay the bills i see some businesses spending hours hours or even an entire day preparing reports to go to a board or go to a managing director to be signed off on what bills get paid and approval max through its batch payments can do that in, in like less, less than a couple of minutes. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of time that a business can claw, claw back from that. Um, I've already touched on this one before, but um, any business that at the moment, they're just giving away too much access to their zero file or QBO to staff members. That's a clear sign that um, that you're kind of outgrowing the capacity of that software and you need kind of a layer of financial controls and approvals, um, uh, uh, financial controls and approvals that sit beyond just what's in the accounting software. And another one is if you have clients who have a big accounts payable, um uh, line item and and they're buying a lot of things on credit well approval max can really help you with with um, bringing in budgets and also just approving things before purchase orders go out and so on gives you a way of controlling costs in a business so that's a that's a really big benefit yeah awesome awesome appreciate that summary um i think there's a lot of a lot of uh points in here that um, firms or, or businesses typically wouldn't think about when thinking about a system like Approval Max, right? Like I know when I started with Approval Max, I thought it was just streamlining approval workflows. If you had a complex approval workflow, then Approval Max can help you save time. But it sounds like is also things like having the audit trail, right? To, to make sure that if there is an audit for, for heavily regulated industries, um, that's going to save a lot of time and, and headache as well. And also fraud detection. I think, you know, when it comes to businesses that are uncomfortable with the level of access that employees may have, um, Approval Max helps with fraud detection, right? And and that is that is that a, is that an issue for businesses? Do you know if if for small businesses do they face you know things like invoice fraud or, or vendor fraud at all? Yeah, I mean, there's there's actually multiple types of fraud that um, that small businesses. Um, fall victim to unfortunately so a really common one which you touched on was invoice fraud and zero found uh, zero did a survey in 2021 that found nearly one in five australian small businesses um, were falling victim to invoice fraud and the average amount they were losing was fifteen thousand dollars so just to explain to people what invoice fraud is that's where so an invoice gets sent into your company and and um it's a fake invoice with um with fake bank details and and all of that and a and an invoice gets paid that shouldn't get paid and and what what zero found was that it wasn't the micro businesses that were falling victim to this so much it was it was actually the businesses that had been five between 5 and 19 employees so these are businesses that are reasonably large but and they've really outgrown what small business software is meant to do. Um, 
but obviously they're not ready to go up to enterprise level systems. So, but um, but what you what you might have is a person sitting in accounts payable, maybe in an admin role, just paying bills, but they don't know the context of that bill. So, so that's where having a system like um, approval max where invoices first get signed off by someone familiar with a particular project or that particular department of a business um, is is very is very important and the thing is you need a streamlined way to do that if you try to do that with email it's just going to become an absolute mess and you'll have a huge bottleneck in your business yeah um, no, actually but touching Sorry, James. I was just going to say, even for myself, you know, with emails, there's always something that falls through the cracks, right? Because you've got so many different things coming through on email, um, different topics and, you know, maybe even some some marketing messages, outbound messages from, from random people. It's very easy for things to fall through the cracks. And in terms of auditing and keeping track of um, all of those emails, it's it's very, very difficult and very manual. Uh, yeah, I, I might just touch on some of the other other frauds that that can occur as well. That's um uh, quite prevalent. The other thing is is um uh, not having control of adding um new suppliers to your accounting file. So um so one thing we do at Approval Max is we can have an approval process for adding adding new suppliers to to your um to your accounting file, and 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 that. Unfortunately, um, you do have a lot of employee fraud where where fake vendors are sent up, and often it can go on for years that fake vendors are getting paid by the business, um, because be um because insufficient financial controls are being put in place. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Um, I think one thing about that study that you mentioned that struck me was it was you know definitely the biggest um or the 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 larger businesses between 5 to 19 as you mentioned were victims of higher amounts of fraud but i think even the smaller size businesses were also being impacted by invoice fraud as well so it's not just you know businesses that are quite large that can benefit from something like approval max it's it's really a range of different business sizes isn't it oh yeah ab absolutely yeah yeah there seems to be like a real um uh, sweet spot though of um of you know where that those though the businesses that are still quite small but they're still just mum and dad businesses that but you know maybe have grown a bit and now and now they don't have that visibility on everything that's going on in the business that's that's where that's that that's where pe businesses are really are really vulnerable yeah awesome okay that's great. Thanks for for the insights on kind of identifying uh, the ideal clients for Approval Max. I guess there's a lot of benefits for clients. What about from the accounting firm's perspective, right? What are some of the benefits for accounting firms for adopting Approval Max as a tool that maybe they structure some kind of service around? How how would you recommend or how how would you um, see that, that happening for for firms? Maybe we can jump to the next yeah. slide. Yeah, absolutely. So, oh yes, I'll jump to the next slide. There we go. Um, okay, yeah. So, um, so, so we kind of touched on some of these before, but there, there's the um, there's those businesses that um, those practices that want to offer accounts payable services and and um, by but by having a streamlined way of making sure that the bills that are get that are that are approved and um, makes it possible to offer that service in a very profitable, very profitable and efficient way. So not only is Approval Max a, um, an approval tool and a financial control tool, it's really also a communication tool because, because it has the ability to add comments on a bill. You can comment on things, you can um, do um, mentions, you can at people when you use that symbol and, and you can add people on watches and things. If, if um, someone else needs to be brought in, you can also reassign on the fly. So all of these things that would really clog up uh, um, your inbox and get really messy and there'd be no no way of real, you'd have to go drill down in your inbox to kind of work out what's happening with something. All of that get ca gets captured in Approval Max. So it makes it really efficient for you to work with your clients to offer offer accounts accounts payable for their for their business 
Um, so the other big thing is um, virtual CFO, virtual CFO services. So a big part of what a CFO does is help um, the businesses they work with implement financial controls. So so approval max really works as a set of guardrails for a for a business that um that make sure that they are following financial controls such as um uh, the one i mentioned the the one i mentioned earlier um but but we also have um delegation so if someone goes on vacation you can you can delegate their responsibility so that's a really good financial controls uh and the one i mentioned earlier which is vendor approval that's that's very important um making the fact that you can just bring up for any transaction that gets approved that that there's a full audit trail of of what ha happens if you want to work with them to implement cost controls that's where you can bring in your budgets from zero and when you're approving bills and purchase orders um you can you can be controlling costs before they before they get made and then you combine that with maybe some of the reporting that you're doing either in zero or in a reporting app you can really work with them to to um achieve the financial goals that they want to want to want to achieve in in the business so so um it really if if i were offering a virtual cfo service like i would just be putting everyone on approval max because honestly i don't see how you do it without uh without approval max i don't see it how you'd have the visibility uh have the visibility all the controls of what goes on in the business day to day without 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 a tool like this so um so that that's really where i see it is and then then i can really see a um a third benefit for um for for our partners which is um which is kind of related to the other two which is your professional indemnity the fact that you're setting up all the if you're offering the either accounts payable services or virtual cfo services you really want to be able to show that you're doing all the right things and and the fact that you have an audit trail for every transaction and then um you in approval max you've got another feature the workflow version history um, where you can see all the changes that get made to workflows over time. It just covers you so much to show show that you've done all the all the right things and you've done everything you can to do things like prevent fraud or um or or miss or just errors, you know, the fact that you've got systems in place to um because so there's also mistakes that happen that are just mistakes, but they can be quite costly mistakes. Yeah, I like that. That that is that um maybe make something like an outsourced accounting firm who's providing these sort of services for businesses. Um, they would really appreciate that that audit ability, right? Being able to see exactly what's happening, um, all from a digital perspective. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Well, I'll tell you a little story that happened just ju just the other day. So, um. So that that visibility of what's happening in the business is so is so important. I had one of our really great partners ring us up and and one of his clients rang him and said, "Why is this approval getting sent to me?" And then and then we're actually were able to go and then we looked at the workflow the workflow that they had and at the moment it didn't make sense in the workflow they had but i i said okay check the date on the approval that they're asking about and we checked the date and then we went into the workflow version history and sure enough on that date the the workflow version history had um had that approval approval going going to that person so um so we were able to di basically diagnose that um uh, you know why the approval was going uh, going to that person on a particular date but it just gives you a sense of like the kind of record keeping and the um the record keeping that in in approval max that that if you're going to be offering virtual CFO services or accounts payable services you really want to have that level of um record of what went on on a particular date and you don't want to burn up you know, an hour of chargeable time um trying to work it out by going back through emails yeah absolutely and it's um it's a, a professional approach right i think in this day and age people are expecting that everything we do in business 
you know, is digitized, is auditable and transparent. And if we're still using, you know, paper or email solutions, it's very manual. There's no transparency. Um, it's not a good look. Um, I really liked what you talked about around the, the budget checking, because I think it's a great way to kind of operationalize because a lot of firms provide budgeting and forecasting services, right? And, and typically that's, you know, more of a, a month end perspective or maybe a, a full financial year, right? We kind of project that out, whether it's using the zero budget manager or using a, a budgeting and forecasting tool um, that's out there on the market. Um, but I think it's a great way to then take that that budget that we've created and and then apply it to all the transactions, all the bills, all the purchase orders that we're approving. And we can see on a month to month basis how we're actually tracking towards that budget. So it's kind of operationalizing um, what we're creating from business advisory or budgeting and forecasting services, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you could be using one of the really great reporting tools to do all this great budgeting and and um but then what are you doing at a organizational level to to uh, to ensure that employees who are writing purchase orders to suppliers um mm -hmm. aren't overspending aren't overspending in certain care um and this is where we really complement complement either either just have the reporting functionalities in zero or the or the budgeting apps because um because we we can kind of pre prevent it before it happens uh, but the two really work so hand in hand yeah awesome awesome i like that otherwise you know you create a budget and if there's no kind of controls around it then it's just wishful thinking in the in the end yeah, 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 that's right. So in Zero, you've got the account watch list feature, which can kind of help you a little bit for that. But even that, that's still after, that's still after the fact that you've already committed to buying it. Whereas in Approval Max, in the budget feature, we'll we'll even tell you things that are we'll tell you both the things that have been approved and the things that are on approval. So it, the purchase orders and bills that are actually going through the system for that account code. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So it sounds like it's a bit of a win-win for the client and for the firm. Um, so if we jump to the next slide, you know, for firms that are getting started with these types of services, I think there's a little bit of uncertainty around, you know, how do we structure this? How do we price it? How do we actually deliver this to clients in a way that they're going to see value? Um, what would you recommend in, in this particular case? How do we kind of price and pitch this to clients? Yeah. Yeah. So, so there are different kind of, as we kind of, with our when in our discussion of ideal clients, there are different scenarios where someone where a practice would be recommending approval max. And so uh, if you're doing accounts payable or virtual CFO services, um, I would argue it probably makes a lot of sense to wrap in the cost of approval max into into whatever service you're providing and and maybe with some other tools as well like you know if you're using reporting tools or using dext or or what have and of course your zero subscription as well like because you're you're working with them on a monthly basis so it makes sense to wrap it all into into sort of you know a, a fixed fee perhaps um but then um but then that kind of leads to the question about um how much should we be charging for set up for um for setup and training and and um so i would kind of advise people in general it's probably going to take you two to three hours to to set up your initial workflows um and then um and then uh, it's probably going to take you a month of like fielding emails and phone calls from from your client um to just kind of get it all settled in so um so that that's that would give you a rough idea of what you should be charging if you if you're not going to sort of wrap it into a into a fixed monthly in fixed monthly fee um yeah yeah so um and the other thing just to you know if you're at approval max partner uh you you've got a partner success manager that can help you with the assist so you're not alone that's why that's why we have account managers who are there to answer all your questions and um and help you in the background help your clients yeah i think um approval max is you know committed to helping or growing together with your firm right and that's what 
the um the partner success managers are there for is really to kind of be the point of contact and um grow together with your firm. So I think that, that's a probably a good segue to jump into the next slide there, Justin. Um, just around our partner program, which is being updated for 2024. So you might have been on the partner program previously, but um we've got basically a, a new a new setup uh, for the partner program. Justin, do you want to run through what's involved in in that um partner program? Yeah, absolutely. So so there's really sort of um two elements to the new partner program. One is sort of a volume based discount based on the number of um based on the number of approval max organizations that you have. And then and then we also have a part partner level discount. So you so as you progress in our partner program, you get you get more discounts. So um so uh, the table's on the screen there, but between one to four, you get zero, a 0% 0 volume discount. Then between five and 24, you get 15, 25 to 99, you get 20, 100 to 499, you get 25 and 500 plus, you get a 30% discount on your, on your partner discount uh, on, on your volume. That's the volume based discount. Um, and then, but we also, as any of you who are on either the Zero or the QPO partner program would know that there's tiers. So there's bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. And at the bronze level, you also get the additional um, benefit of access to a partner portal. Um, you get an onboarding session with partner account manager. We kind of touched on that before. Um, direct contact with a partner account manager for support. Um, yeah, automatic feature updates, badges, and we also have um, a practice staff area so you can manage your bit like the My Zero screen in Zero or Zero HQ for managing your staff access. And we're actually got some improvements to that area coming in the this year in the in our in our roadmap as well. Then you go up to silver, and then in addition to the volume based discount, you're getting you'd get an additional ten percent discount, and and as part of that, you're entitled to do a quarterly business review with your partner success manager um, and where we work with you build a success roadmap as well as we give you a free demo organisation so you can run demos of Approval Max. Uh, then you go up to gold and the, then that margin moves 20%. Um, plus you can have a monthly partner success um, team call. So we'll do training with your team. Uh a free partner org for your own organization. So this is an addition to the demo org. You also get approval max for free for your own practice. Um, and then um and then also um if we if we've got someone in your region, um uh in person um uh, quarterly business reviews where we can come come out on site and and work work with you. And then once you go up to platinum that margin moves to 30% and um and we will do marketing content collaboration and exclusive advanced product webinars. So we're, we're planning on doing uh, webinars. So all of these discounts combine with your volume-based discount. So to get bronze, uh, you need to have one to four um, uh uh, one to four clients on approval max silver is five to 24 plus two staff member certifications so another benefit of the entire partner program is you could do staff certification uh, for free and and that's um and then gold is 25 to 49 and then platinum is 50 plus so that that's how you um uh that that's how you um uh, get get to those levels and and we've already got quite a lot of partners a lot of you probably know know the names of some of these at different points in my career i've been account managers for some of the people on the list here um yeah so let's let's jump to q a yeah so guys if you do have any questions um anything that we haven't covered today or or questions that you have about approval max or about what we discussed feel free to chuck those into the q a section of zoom Happy to spend the next five minutes or so going over that. What I will also do whilst you're sending through those questions, I'll just send a link to my Calendly. And that way, if you are interested in having a chat with myself and Justin a little bit more, maybe you want a personalized demonstration, or maybe you've got specific use cases that you're working with with clients and you know looking to see if Approval Max would be a good fit, 
um, feel free to book in a time with with myself and Justin, and um, yeah, we can have a bit more of a personalized, in depth conversation. Um, there we go. Um, James, you sent that just to the hosts and panel myself. So I've uh, <laughs> okay. copied and pasted it to to everyone. Appreciate that. Yep, people are probably looking at you. Yeah. Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so um yeah and no we, we would we'd love to have a chat with you about how we can help you um implement some of the things some of the things we've discussed today and if you're ever unsure about you know is approval max right um uh you know we will uh yeah you just just give your account manager a call or give james or myself a call and and uh and we we can help you, but the, those main criteria are there where where someone uh, or where an organisation has more than one approver, or where you know um, things need to be approved in a certain order, or um, uh, or you know there's there's different departments that need re reporting. Once you get once you have those complications, um, the the inbuilt approval process inside say zero just really doesn't doesn't work anymore. Okay, so it looks like we must have answered all the questions because um, we haven't had any questions come through yet. Yep. Okay, well, if you do have any further questions going forward, you can always um, re reply to the email that we're going to send out following this webinar. So as I mentioned earlier, we are going to send a recording of the session. You'll receive that in the next 24 hours. If you want, you can always book a, a time with myself and Justin. Otherwise, thank you very much, everyone, for your time and attention today. I hope you enjoyed the session and um, hope to, oh, sorry, just before we do close out, we've got a, a last minute question coming through from Georgia Hill. Um, so does Approval Max start, have a best practice set up for clients? Justin, maybe you can take that one. Uh, it, it, it really does. Um... Uh, it does does depend on the individual needs of of each individual client, so um, so this is I guess where where we'd help is uh, if you spoke with your account manager or myself, um, it, I can um, I can help you work out what would be the best best approval uh, approvals. Uh, process for your clients and and that's what we do is we sit with you and go what what should the workflow review what are they currently doing and and we we try to implement it but then we might make what might might make some suggestions because because sometimes people are doing something that's very manual and and we say hey you're using approval max now you don't need to do it that way you can actually just just automate it that the approval goes to the right person without um with because sometimes they people want to have one person who 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 manually assigns the approval and and we're like no you don't need to do that you could just use tracking categories or something like that to make sure it goes to the right person right person automatically um and then and then things like things that have people haven't thought about before like um uh, uh having having an approval process for their new suppliers that that's um that that's something we'll often suggest and then um do you want every staff member to be able to just add a new add a new um supplier to the to zero which is generally no um so and then uh and of course one of the really big benefits of approval max is that you can then decide maybe all these people who currently have access to the zero file don't need access to zero anymore or who can have their their access um uh, more limited now because because they can do what they need to do in approval max so um there's lots of things that can come out of a discussion that are best practice but but it can depend a lot on the individual needs of the client yeah i think probably what's best because every every client is different is scheduling a time with justin right justin and myself and yep. we can run you through and have a discussion with you and understand what your current process is and what would be like a best practice this going forward i think um it's it's like you mentioned justin it's something that that comes up quite often where clients sometimes get stuck on how they currently do it and they want to do the same thing in approval max even though what they were doing was super manual people are resistant to change but the only the only constant is change so um you got to get used to it i think Absolutely. all right any other questions guys if not i think 
we can call it there. Thank you very much for your time and attention, as I mentioned. And um, we'll send through a copy of the recording. And if you want to get in touch with us in the meantime, feel free to do so. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.